what is going on guys we are back with another video today it is uh we're starting this one out real early it's currently one in the morning that's actually 1 30 right now and we got a little bit of a drive we're gonna make we're gonna be driving through the night um today and uh i guess um, eventually end up at our final destination, which is a state which I've only fished in one time in my life. Um, but that one time was very impactful and immediately made it kind of my favorite. Oh, we got GoPro sliding around. So where are we going, you might ask? We're going to North Dakota and uh, specifically Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Very famous walleye fishing destination. Um, and like I said, I was there back in June. Um, had a phenomenal experience, caught a ton of fish and caught a bunch of big fish doing different patterns entirely. So um, anytime you can kind of go to a place to do two different patterns, that's kind of the cool thing in my book. So obviously now late summer, probably a little bit tougher fishing depending on who, where, who you talk to, where you go, things of that nature. But um, I'm super excited to get out there. I'm flying solo today and uh, we're gonna be here for a couple of days. So hopefully we get a couple of good videos for you guys. And uh, you know, anytime you go, you know, go into a place in June, then go into a place again in late August. Um, it's basically like learning a lake all over again because it's just going to be totally different, right? And uh, that's going to kind of be the exciting part, you know, breaking down basically a new body of water again. You know, we know some of the specifics, but anytime you can break down a new body of water, it's always good in my books. So we'll definitely go into some of that kind of stuff, how we're breaking the lake down. Hopefully, like I said, catch a bunch of fish. But for now, um, we're going to guzzle down some caffeine, bunch of coffee, bunch of Red Bulls and uh, drive for the next eight or nine hours. So um, stay tuned, let's get it going on and uh, we'll see you in North Dakota. Welcome to North Dakota. All right, well, we have made it. Devil's Lake, North Dakota. It's a long, drizzly, foggy, road construction filled drive this time highway 2 was all tore up but um, anyways we are officially here and uh, it's actually a lot windier than I was hoping it was gonna be but uh, we're headed to the first bow ramp gonna kind of see what it looks like and uh, I've explored very little of this lake like I said I've been here one time so um, yeah I, I kind of the way the west side of the lake lays out I kind of like just the way it looks on a map a little bit more uh, so we're gonna check that first we got a big east wind of all wind directions today so we're gonna head to bow ramp on the west side kind of see how windy it is and if it's just really really windy we might go farther east and try to find some calmer water but uh we'll see how it goes but uh it feels good to be back it's kind of mid-morning now the drive took a lot longer than i was hoping it would um but yeah i had to stop a couple times and you know just weather and um road construction just the classic road trip um, problems I guess you run into but stay tuned like I said we're headed to a bow ramp right now and uh, we'll catch up to you when I guess we're on the water all right well, we have uh, officially made it onto Devil's Lake. And uh, I didn't film a launch because it was just absolutely pouring and it actually poured for about an hour. Um, so I'm kind of a little bit ahead of you guys, but I'll kind of catch you guys up to speed here. Whenever you're on a new body of water, your body of water you're relatively unfamiliar with, there's a pretty easy process um, to kind of finding fish. I'm not gonna call it easy, but I kind of go through the same process every time. And I'll kind of fire this GoPro up here so maybe we can film it a little bit better. but basically what we're doing is uh this time of year we're looking for really big structures surrounded by basin and that's generally a pretty consistent way um, to kind of get on a lot of these fish quickly now the depth zones might change all this different stuff might change right uh, but for example we'll kind of go to like this this corner of the lake over here and we'll kind of see how well this picks up so i set my hummingbird highlight and devil's lake fish is a little bit shallower than a lot of lakes i'm used to fishing and what i mean by that is i feel like most of the time i'm out here you know the water's kind of got a, some color to it and it seems like a lot of the fish from my first experience here were anywhere from three feet to 12 feet and generally a lot of lakes i fish fish deeper than that so we're going to kind of you know generally be looking a little bit shallower middle of summer like this late summer i'm probably going to be looking at it what i assumed would be depths of anywhere from 
and 10 feet to 17 feet. So what we can kind of do is start looking for depth zones that are like this, and we're looking for really big pieces of structure, right? And what I mean by big pieces of structure is any really big point that comes out to the base and any really big hump that kind of fits that depth zone. Now we might get in that spot and say, oh man, all the fish are in eight feet. Or we might get to that spot and say, all the fish are in 22 feet. I don't know, but you can always start with big pieces of structure. And what I mean by that is like, here's a big, deep open water basin. Looks like a lot of water that's like, um, you know, 28 uh kind of feet like that and then right here we have like a really big point that comes out and another really big point here that comes out and this is the kind of stuff that i'm looking for a lot so in this whole basin you know we got two really big pieces of structure and you know, a lot of times you can just kind of go go around the whole lake fishing these big pieces of structure looking anywhere from you know five feet of water all the way out to 25 feet of water and uh, just start looking for fish or cover you know and a lot of times if you're seeing if you're not seeing fish you're in the right you're in the wrong kind of cover um like th these fish might want weeds and instead of wood, you know, or vice versa. So that's kind of a lot of times what I'm doing. And we're kind of running up to one of these spots right now. And um, all we're gonna do is start driving around this spot and kind of looking for fish, seeing what's around us, things of that nature. And this is just like those spots we just showed. It's a really big point that kind of runs way out into the lake. And, uh, you know, Devils for the most part, it seems to have a lot of shoreline structure and not a lot of like middle of the lake stuff going on. So a lot of times it's going to be a lot of these big long point extensions or these big long flats that come offshore. They probably got wood in three feet, weeds in five feet, and maybe some more trees out in 17 feet. That just kind of seems to be the way this lake lays out. Now, when you get out to these spots, obviously the first thing to do is fire up the hummingbird, right? And what we're gonna be doing is uh, primarily running side imaging. If we do start seeing fish out deeper, we might flip over to sonar. But this lake, Devils, is really sandy and every lake might be different. If you're fishing a lake that has seems to have like a lot of rock structure, a lot of that thick, heavy rock that a lot of us Wisconsin, Minnesota guys are used to fishing, then we probably might run more sonar and down imaging in the middle of summer because we're not gonna be picking a lot of those fish out. Um, but for the most part, I'm just gonna run straight side imaging out here because it seems like so far anyways that this spot is mostly sand and uh, that is kind of the key. So whenever you're fishing a spot that's real sandy, turn your hummingbird on, set it to full screen side imaging like I have here, and start driving around. And we're gonna kind of zig and zag all over this point, anywhere from probably, we'll start in that eight to 15 feet, because that's kind of where I got a feel in the fish are gonna be. Um, but that could be totally off, and we could end up in three feet, or we could end up in 25 feet. All right, and we're kind of starting to see some stuff that we liked. After a little bit of zigging and zagging around here, um, I'll take, I'll start taking some screenshots and I've kind of taken a few screenshots as we've went, but this point is mostly wood and the fish are like not super crazy obvious. And that's cause I think they're like a lot of smaller fish. I think they're a bunch of like 15 inches, um, or they're white bass, which maybe that's totally wrong too. But so far, this is what it's looking like. And we'll kind of throw some arrows up here. You know, here's another screenshot here. You can see all the wood and then this small speckling in between. These are actually what I'm assuming to be walleyes and uh we kind of started out in 10 12 feet and the fish just kind of there already seems to kind of be fish in this depth zone so i'm not going to really worry a ton about looking at a whole bunch of different depth zones we might just kind of set up shop and just see if we can't like get one or two fish right away and uh, that'll kind of let us know at least what they are for sure and there's a big wad of them right there we'll throw up another screenshot right there <laughs> pressed up against a bunch of this wood and uh Wow, I mean, this is just Devil's Lake, North Dakota, right? It's exciting. There's just a ton of walleyes in this lake, as I can't, I came to realize the first time. But now I'm guessing right away that this is either going to be we either weed through a lot of small fish to get a bigger fish, or uh, the bigger fish are probably more than likely just doing something else. But we're going to throw the I mean, coda down here real quick and maybe just take a couple of exploratory casts and see if we just can't get on them right away and just kind of get a little bit of that, you know immediate kind of uh ju not justification but kind of immediate uh feedback on what exactly we're doing here Look at that. first cast right there got a boat right next to me it's tiny too super tiny not what we're looking for at all right there but we can conclude that, in fact, uh, these are walleyes. I just don't think any of them are going to be real big based on the way they look, which is kind of what we thought. I'm talking really quiet because there's a boat like literally right next to me, but 
we'll give it a couple more casts here. See if they all end up being small like that or what the deal is. These ones are, in fact, dinkers. Kind of like I figured they'd be. And I'm pretty much getting a bite on literally every single cast and uh, not hooking up with many of them. So we're just gonna bail off of this spot just like immediately here and uh, get away from some of these boats and hopefully go find something better. So we're either gonna need different spot, different zep zone or different kind of cover. One of those three things will probably yield uh, larger fish. We just gotta find them. All right, spot number two here. Kind of a similar type of spot. Uh, big point comes way out. We're either gonna hopefully find something on the outer rim of that or something like way up shallow or maybe just some kind of different structural element altogether. Like I said, you know, that first spot, I was talking kind of quiet. So it don't seem like I just wasn't pleased with the results, but not quite their desired results in which we're looking for. Obviously fish that small um, are not why I drove eight and a half hours through the night last night, but uh, there was a bunch of fish there so it might just be something as simple as hitting a bunch of these spots looking for bigger marks or it might be like i said shallower deeper somewhere in between but we're going to scan this this point's a lot bigger it's a lot uh it's kind of a big round point so we're going to kind of cruise all around at different depths see what we see here All right, spot number two. I think we got the same fish on here. 14 incher. So far we're on the 14 incher pattern. Found some fish up in shallower water here. Sometimes when you're up in shallower water, um, the fish can look bigger on the graph just because they're not as deep. So we'll kind of see here. We'll catch a few in this school, maybe switch baits, see if we can't catch a few more. And uh, see what the size is. But so far, any kind of point with wood, 100% fish on it. I think the issue is just gonna be uh, finding some larger fish to catch. Oh man, just getting small fish. Every single cast, I can tell they're popping it. Yeah, that one just ran away with it. <laughs> they're touching it, but they're not like, uh, I don't think a lot of them are big enough to like eat the whole thing, which is not a good sign. Maybe I'll switch baits for a second. Maybe we won't have to, but I got a feeling this is, ooh, ooh, okay. No, I think he's got it right under the chin. Well, there we go. Catching the same fish over and over. We have found the mass of them as they are biting every single cast right now multiple times per cast we're just uh not quite seeing the size we want yet we might try something else or maybe we'll make one more cast see if we can't i guess scrounge up whoa scrounge up something a little bit bigger but uh so far i've probably made 15 casts out here on devil's lake and there's probably a whole bunch of it's just like on repeat every single cast i'm getting multiple bites when i'm in a pot of fish and they're all kind of the same ones All right, well, it has been a couple of hours since I last talked to you guys, and it has been the same thing. Every single spot I've went to, everywhere you'd think there'd be fish, any kind of big point extending into the basin, there's been fish I'm finding anywhere from 17 feet to uh, uh, kind of all the way up into like, I even caught fish in six feet. I've just caught a lot of the same fish so far. But uh, the sun finally popped out and we got just a couple hours left of the day here. Only been out fishing for really probably, I guess, three, four hours, mostly driving around. But um, we're kind of coming back into one of these spots now where we marked just a ton of these fish. And the weird part is, like, maybe it's a day 
Maybe it's the spots. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's the lure I was using. Um, it, it looks like there's like some halfway decent fish mixed in with some of these smaller fish, but uh, I haven't gotten a bite. So I'm just gonna kind of slow down and basically every spot I pulled up to, I might see a pod uh, or a whole bunch of them cast at them and just catch one out of the jerk minnow right away. Um, so I might slow down as long as I got my two lines. Um, either slip over one or get some kind of slower presentation in front of them and then maybe do something else with my other rod. But uh, as far as finding like, these numbers of fish, uh, very easy to find. And uh, we're either gonna see here in about the next half an hour if this is gonna be like a totally abandon this pattern tomorrow and just go look for something totally different uh, as far as big fish go. But as far as my time out here today, I don't have a ton of time as I got here late in the day. So we're just gonna beat on the first school of fish we find here for a little while. And uh, it would be nice to see some of those, you know, 15 to 20 inches. And fish on. Oh, well, the jerk minnow is still out producing the slip. That one's probably, oh, it's that 15 and a half incher that everybody's after right there. On the jerk minnow junior. Where'd my slip over go? Oh, it's still up, it's just bobbing around in the waves. Well, there's uh, our nicest one of the day, which is by no means a big walleye. Is this thing down now? No, it's still up. I'm gonna pitch this right back to that zone where I keep catching them here. So I get two lines in there. We'll see if that changes anything. Somewhere in that vicinity there. This lake is so incredibly, unbelievably loaded with walleyes, it's just absolutely insane. Now, would it be nice if we were catching big ones? Yes, but we will find the big ones. It might take more time than we have today, though. But man, these fish just always seem to be eating. And there just always seems to be a ton of them where you th right where you think there should be fish. Right there, fish on. First it felt maybe better, it still could be I guess. Yeah, I mean he's that, all right, all right. Well we're magically getting like a two inch upgrade here. I could probably just flip him in, but uh, he did come off right there. All right, we're figuring it out. We're not complaining too much anymore. I was complaining when they were all, you know, 12, 13s. Now at least we're in that 15, 16 inch size. At least we're in the eater size fish now, which we are gonna let them all go. Probably something every walleye angler should think about doing more. All right, well, we're gonna mix it up from the jigging. We know that works. And uh, see if we can't spinner rig some of these fish. Just gonna kind of run two down rods right kind of outside of maybe through some of this timber we might get snagged we might not we probably will at some point and see if they bite these anytime you're kind of putting a pattern together or fishing a new lake it's good especially if you're on like a multi-day thing good to be able to like get fish on two different things in case one thing totally flops one day and then you got a backup plan snap jigging obviously a little bit more aggressive type of thing spinner rigs much more slow and Finesse if they're in the mood for that. Hooked it up. Another one on the spinner here. And they are kind of running all about that same size. There we go. But man, if you're eating fish, we are piling them up. Here's another one, you know, about 15 right there. That one came on the real crawler and not the plastic. The little plastic almost looks like it's getting bit. Another eater class fish. <laughs> How insane is this? It is just absolutely endless, endless fish. And we're gonna measure this one just so I'm, I feel like I'm off on my size. I feel like these are like smaller than I think they are, but 
I'd say that's like about the average that fish is. Oh, you're angry, buddy. You're angry. You see 16. Six, <coughs> 16 inch walleyes. They're puking up bugs. Endless, endless, endless fish. Unbelievable. I mean, it's just insane. Absolutely insane. No live bait needed. I don't even know if I'm supposed to really mention this yet. But we'll go ahead and mention it, I guess. Situations like this where you're just dealing with a million fish. I'm running a Uncle Josh pork crawler. These were around for a little while. Then they kind of got rid of them. Then they brought them back. And uh, this is one of those baits where I've been lucky enough to use it kind of. I don't know, I think they're actually out now, but I'll link them down below. It's basically a pork crawler, so they pretty much never come off. You never have to like rebate. I'll kind of show you the package here in a second. They sell them at a seven inch and a longer uh, or a shorter, like three and a half inch if you're gonna run like a real short one. And I'm taking the sevens and I'm just running like two thirds, but I could run the three inch one right now. The fish literally do not care. And uh, in a scenario like this, where they're just biting this insanely good, um, this is what I'm using right here and they kind of come in a package like this I believe like I said I'll kind of look at that right there oh missed that one <laughs> there we go but well, that's kind of what they look like right there like I said I'll link them down below look at this just unbelievable dude fish after fish after fish I mean you guys are watching this in live time how insane is this decent walleye here and man are they biting right now insane this was the first kind of area we checked out oh we got a pike on now we're catching a little bit of everything now look at that but uh obviously they're just chewing that thing up and all of a sudden just everything in the lake's coming to life and i just broke my spinner rig off <laughs> All right it is actually the next day now and i uh, got in pretty late last night tried to edit i was awake for like 48 hours because the whole day before fishing and then driving over here not sleeping all night and then fishing for the second half of the day yesterday and uh, caught a ton of walleyes i bet i literally caught 50 yesterday and could have just made the same video 10 times over but um obviously just caught a ton of fish doing a couple of different things um the fish i just kind of wanted to do a wrap up kind of on where we were finding fish um, all the fish we were finding were on big points um, with either wood or a little bit of mix of wood and rock. I didn't get shallow enough to fish weeds. Devil's Lake is super, super low right now, um, like a lot of different bodies of water. So I think those weed edges might be like in three and four feet right now, which is pretty shallow. But there definitely could be fish up there um, in this kind of lake, in my experience. Um, but I obviously caught a ton of fish in the spots we were fishing. Big points, like I said, with wood and rock. Depths were kind of eight to 16 17 feet of water seem to have a lot of fish and like i said it's actually the next day now i'm done editing this video i just got to put this little clip in there and then go back out fishing and the plan going forward will either be um, just exclusively look for bigger fish on the graph or try very different things like crankbaits in deeper water or shallower water or i don't know we're just gonna have to mix it up and try a whole bunch of different things but and the first time I was here in June, um, caught a lot of the same fish I'm catching right now up in like six, you know, three to seven feet of water. And then we got on a pattern um, fishing where the fish are right now, where it was like exclusively big fish. And obviously a lot of times as the summer goes on, those fish shift to deeper water, which my guess is 100% probably what's happening right now. And uh, maybe those big fish are deeper and now those eater size fish have kind of gone to that mid depth stuff. I don't know, we're gonna have to see. That's kind of the fun part. But after kind of doing a lot of research, it seems like the fish I was catching yesterday were pretty common as far as what a lot of guys come out here and catch, which makes a lot of sense because you go to every single hotel out here and it's a meat cleaning fish factory, right? As people come to Devil's Lake, obviously to keep a bunch of wallets and it's probably a great place to come to do that. Um, but yeah, the goal today is obviously hopefully find some bigger fish and it's probably going to take a little bit more driving around we're going to go to a different basin of the lake lakes kind of broke up into several different basins see if that makes a difference or just see if there's a structural element there that's holding maybe a higher percentage of big fish but i appreciate you guys watching this video just kind of want to do this little breakdown at the end stay tuned for more content like i said we're up here at devil's lake for a couple days and uh, that's kind of the plan we got to put it together today and uh, hopefully find some bigger fish but i appreciate you guys watching this if you guys are not yet stay or subscribe to this channel stay tuned for more content we'll see you tomorrow